Today is August 11th in the year 2021. My name is Tina Dodds and I'm here with medium Karen Bakirin and our spirit guides, Jesus and Mary Magdalene. We're doing a spiritual health check for, just let me know when we are connected with. We are connected. So we'll begin by scanning way, way out on her. And just let me know what you notice overall. Well, I'm way out there and then I see like this very small, thin tornado. <laughs> like a really tiny tornado going like into her head. So for me, that's like, it's a portal. Mm -hmm. um, So I'm thinking, let's close that. <laughs> like, so we're going to close that up. Um, surrounding that, it feels still pretty, like, cloudy, but not dark cloudy, but a little bit everywhere. So I'm still thinking, like, when I sift, like, through this cloud stuff, what it is, it, it feels like there's still congestion inside mm -hmm. so confusion or you know things that she's learning um there are clear patches so i do see that she's getting you know insights and clarity there, she's not being bombarded by darkness per se um they are around though i do feel them but um like not anything that is directly attaching in this outer field um so we've closed that tornado portal thing, um, clearing out also those clouds, giving her more clarity. Um, it is a question of her uh, third eye and intuition. Um, there is something there, so we'll address that when we get there. Um, what else do I see here? Any dark force entities in the outer etheric? Um, not directly attached, but there are dark energies around. So that have come in through the portal that have, uh, you know, around the people in her life experiences, you know, through the backdrop people. And also, uh, yeah, just like around okay. a general feel. So we've removed all of that. <laughs> um, yeah, close that portal, remove all that, remove all the energies around, uh, giving her a much more clear space to be thinking. I'm wondering if you can sense how, why, or by whom that portal was created. Um, well, it feels like a false light type feeling. Mm -hmm. When I like touch it, it just, that's what it, yeah, that's the sense that I'm getting from it. It's a false light thing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. So we're in the outer etheric checking for her. If she has a matrix pod. Matrix pod. Yes. So we're going to remove her from this matrix pod. Uh, cleansing her body as well and removing the cords. So I'm just going to count the cords. So she has eight. So we are unplugging her and clearing um, the plugs. Uh, so that's good. I'm checking for any crucifixion implants. Uh, five she had, so we remove them. <clears throat> And any geisha nodes? Four, also removed. Okay. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, zooming in closer now and checking for sovereignty. Does she have any negative entities attached to her? Um, there is a level one and a level two. Um, I feel like as she's on her path and like learning things, they're kind of throwing some things at her, um, which I feel is very important. I, I 
believe she brought up discernment. So this is exactly the lesson that she's needing to, to learn. So to feel through it, to see how it makes her feel to, you know, when you kind of question things, I mean, it's good to question everything. So that's always like good indication not to just take for granted what it is and just accept it for what it is. Um, so they throw things in her, in her space, I guess. So she may like that false light stuff can feel good. They can, you know, feel it feels nice to, um, to connect with these kind of energies. Um, so I'm wondering then because she had that false light portal and this is coming up again. She mentioned that she connected with a collective of Pleiadians. Is that legitimate or is that a false light connection? I don't feel good about it. Okay. Um, yeah, so she no, said she said that she initially experienced the vibration of love and was kind of it felt good and she was kind of overwhelmed by that, but at the same time, she felt her whole arm go numb. So is this a sign to her that even though you're feeling this love, pay attention to the rest of your body because these false light beings can create that feeling of feeling good, but aren't legitimate or genuine. Correct. They'll give you like half truths. So it's kind of like they're trying to portray this thing. So they will give you that feeling that you're looking for, the good feelings. But then it's like your body is reacting to something else that you should listen to at the yeah. same time. So, you know, like they'll give you little clues like that. Um, but again, doesn't mean that's a really good one, like a good example. Um, but as you go deeper into this like learning curve, it's always, again, just question it and listen and always observe and never really take everything for actual fact until you're absolutely sure. But, you know, like, I don't think you can actually ever be absolutely sure if you're, unless you're questioning it all the time or checking the sources of like, you know, the, the beings that you're speaking to through a very thorough um, check through. Mm -hmm. um, because one of the ways they lure people in is because they know humans want to make these connections, especially with beings like Pleiadians and things like that. So they will come in cloaked as these kinds of beings to start pulling you in because they know humans will get like really excited that they finally connected with something, you know? Right. But it doesn't mean that you're not connected. Um, sometimes the connection could be a little more subtle. Sometimes it could be a lot more obvious. Um, there are times that people are genuinely connecting with real beings, for example, but then along the way, they just take for granted that this is who they're connecting to. And then they're not really connecting to them anymore. It's something else. So it's really important that before you connect is to check to make sure that they are who they say they are just by asking them if they are who they say they are. Um, but yeah. we can give you that information after. So, um, and like, for example, like for us, like when we connect with our guides, we have to, again, yeah, go through a nine step check uh, or 11 step check. And also but prior to that, we have our own um, passwords that they have to pass through and, you know, so there's there's a lot of ways like we have to be very careful, especially who we're connecting with, because, you know, if you do connect with something dangerous, you know, you're putting yourself and others in danger if you're not careful. Yeah. OK, so these beings that are there now, were they the um, the perpetrators of this false light? Yes, it feels like that. It just yeah, it was also relative to that. Um, yeah. The portal right yeah but yeah okay. so they are gone now yes you have to chop them up any hooks or cords um no i don't feel that at all I'm just giving her like a, a good comb through but it looks pretty clear to me yes good how is her grounding uh grounding is in the low 70s so we're bringing that to 100 and Checking through the inner etheric field, making sure that is bright and clear. 
Uh, just a couple of spots that just need some brightening up. So we're going to brighten, strengthen, and optimize this space. I'm checking the inner ear for any implants or devices. Yeah, so there's one on the third eye, um, which I've removed. So this is also like infringing on her vision, her intuition and whatnot. So with that being gone, it should help with the process of like listening and tuning into herself. So this is a learning curve for a lot of people. It's like, can you learning how to trust yourself, learning how it feels? Um, because usually when we have our like hindsight, like we will feel like, oh, I knew that already, you know? So you do have like that intuition and intuitive feel to it. So it's just getting to sharpen it a lot more. Okay, good. Any other devices? Um, no, that seems like the only one. I do feel that though, that there's a cord on her throat. So I'm cutting that, that was brought to my attention. Where is this connected to? Cord looks like it's connecting. See here. Yeah, it's like it was coming from that. What do you call it? Portal. Portal. Oh, sorry, the portal. There was like a cord or something like that that was coming from it that was coming in. So it was like as if to, I suppose whoever she was connecting with or perhaps those Pleiadians, for example, it's like they were trying to get her to um, and speak the information. Can you repeat that here? Um, you went out for a minute. Yeah, so I, I've like, as I feel through it, it feels like those Pleiadians that she was connecting to. And the goal of it was that when they were connecting with her, that she would like download or get that information so that she can speak and share that information. But there's false light in those, in those frequencies. Okay. So they wanted her to share the information Correct. that she would be getting from them. Yes. And how would that affect the people that she would share it with? Well, it would definitely keep them off track from, you know, their own path. And, you know, like what happens when you put so much emphasis on, let's say, channeled messages or messages that are coming from beings or whatever, it, what I'm seeing is that it unhooks people from themselves so that they put more of their power into these things. So it's another way for them to also take energy and for people to not feel so, um, I guess like they don't trust themselves more, like they, it, it gets undone. So that's interesting. <clears throat> so it causes more disconnection. Correct. And that, that cord is gone now? Yes. Is there anything else related to these beings that needs to be cleared? Well, the intention behind it is not genuine. So we are setting a boundary around her. Any other cords, devices, implants, anything like that related to them? I feel like they've all also tried to put a, like a, it looks like an auric shield around, but it's not. It's kind of like another way to um, to cloak it, so to tap into her energy field and to to take energy. This shield was placed around her. Yes. So and I have removed it. Okay. And that was a way for them to siphon energy. Yes. Anything else related to them? Any other infringements in her field? No, that's all I can get. I feel that they had 
it's really interesting because it's like they had given her that feeling of love and you know that whatever so that's kind of like their I'll call it anesthesia mm. because you're so focused on that but then when they were doing these things to her she was getting those physical sensations so they didn't realize or they didn't know that she was actually sensitive enough to pick up on that mm. is there anything in her um let me just check what arm it was. She's sad. Is it left? Yes, left arm. Yeah. I'm just checking to see if there's anything there. I think it was just the reaction. I don't feel anything really got in, but it was like... Um, a reaction that there's something like within the vicinity that is not, you know, like when your body rejects something. So it was the body warning her. Yes. Well, that's good that she knows that she has that, you know, that the body will warn her. Yes. And to pay close attention just for subtle things and not to be paranoid, you know, we don't want you to be paranoid, but just aware. Yeah, that's all. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's just to know. So if something like this were to happen to her again, what should she do? She should just, you know, like verbally state out loud, I do not consent. And you can just imagine yourself like cloaking yourself. And like, if you feel or like do a body scan on yourself and see if they had attached anything around, if you do, like you could, cut them off and or put like you know violet flame light whatever flame you want to cut that stuff off um imagine your roots too and your feet so you can do like a um, like a wash through from the top of your head all the way down your body like pepto bismol and just like allow whatever does not belong to you to go through your roots and to give it to the earth you know so there's a different ways you can do it okay. um is this why she was guided to us for an RS arm? Yes, yeah, so that she can um, sharpen her discernment. So, I mean, it's like a good way, yes, like to clear herself so that she is fully sovereign and, you know, has an ener clear energetic slate. Mm -hmm. And so that moving forward with the advice that we're giving, she'll be able to be hyper aware of what's going on. But again, we don't want to instill like any... Um, any fear in you this is nothing to be afraid of it's like again like it's so subtle like your body having those sensations and again you like you know someone coming to your house to like offer you something you can just say like no thanks like i don't want this and just close the door right. yeah exactly okay good well it's it's amazing that she's already so connected that she felt that to begin with and then she was guided to us for help so right that's amazing already you're really yes. deeply connected to higher self. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't need anything other than your higher self at this time. You know, like if you can strengthen your connection with your higher self, literally that's all you would ever need. You know, like it's, mm -hmm. it's such a, you know, the spiritual community now is like really trying. It's like a competition world in like, who can I connect to or who's, you know, who's dimension and blah, blah, blah. It, that, that doesn't matter you know like all your wisdom and all your inner knowing always comes from within yourself so you technically don't need anything outside of you to give you anything that you don't already have exactly thank you okay good checking for any curses no black magic spells no witchcraft no i mean like i'm i'm feeling like this life no but it there's some things that just feel really far out there like mm -hmm. so i'll say no for this life but i'm setting a boundary like for whatever may be coming in but i don't feel that it's coming in it feels really far out okay so just setting a boundaries there okay and any hexes no voodoo again far out there placing a boundary Okay. 
Uh, any other kind of occult ritual activity? Feels familial, like someone in the family had done something like that, that may have caused like some sort of um, tear, I guess, in the family dynamic, let's say. Um, has to do with money, it feels. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it comes from the mother's side and it's a masculine figure that had done something like this. Mm -hmm. Unsure. Um, it's so vague to me, like the, I'm trying to tap into it, but it's really like a vague thing. How um, far does it go back? Uh, like I'm sensing her mother and then it feels like maybe her uncle, but it's like the mother's uncle rather, but it's not a blood relative. It's, it's like her aunt's husband or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it kind it's vague. Like it's not really coming into this family, but it kind of is because it's related to her aunt mm -hmm. or something like that, you know, mm -hmm. but it's far, um, but in there somewhere. So I'm just gonna like cut whatever is kind of coming into the, like trickling into the family lines that are related to them and, and just setting a boundary there. Perfect. Okay. Any psychic attacks? I don't sense that, no. Okay, good. So moving to the chakras. Oh, where she wants her chakras removed. Okay. Or combined with the overlays removed. Yes, we'll remove the overlays. Just a question that she can answer for us, but I think, um, I'm curious to know that if the pains that she were feeling actually in the left arm are relative to where she got the shot. Hmm. So just something to, for our curiosity, um, if she feels to answer. Um, so for the chakras, yes, I will remove the overlays. So I'm just taking my... Black pointy skewer. Going into the... Crown, third eye, throat, heart, solar plexus, sacral root. Just capping it off and as I pull them out, I'm going to combine and allow her organic light love energy from within her three power centers to combine and create one clear channel. Filling in the spaces where these overlays were. Allowing also that light to go into the legs, into the feet. So we're just gonna open up her soles, allow the roots to grow out and anchor that into the 5D grid. Okay. Okay, beautiful, thank you. Um, and switching the frequency now, checking for any interdimensional parasites. Not, no, nothing really. So we're just going to vacuum it just to say that we vacuumed around her. And she's clear. I'm checking for any earthbound soul attachments, which are human souls that have died but not fully crossed over and sometimes they get attached to living humans she is clear okay. any other portals besides the one we found no that portal went pretty like it came into her crown but it went pretty in so like everything has been closed She's clear now. And checking her home for any portals. 
I am getting drawn to the bathroom mirror has a portal in there. So we're also closing and sealing that. Um, upon entry of the home on the right ceiling, there is a dark force entity there. A level two. Uh, I feel like it's there just to like grab energy. So it looks like a, a siphoner, especially like when you come home, you know, kind of like you feel like there's a part of you that just feels uh, a relief, like you're safe. So it's kind of like leaving yourself open because you're vulnerable in your home, you know? Oh, wow. That's sneaky. Yeah. It's crazy. I was just seeing that and I was like, I don't like that. <laughs> so, um, so that has been taken out. Do you get a sense of how long that's been? Uh, it's been there for a while, actually. It was very happy where it was. It wasn't very happy when I took it. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Any other DFAs in the home? Um, okay, hold on. Back on my hand. Just, just doing like my view, living room feels clear. I'm just going to go through the internet connection. So we're just going to comb through the frequencies there and clearing out all the um, televisions and computers, devices, cell phones, etc. cetera. Um, window in the back. I don't know if it's relative to like kitchen or something like that. It feels like, or whatever's facing like the, the backyard window. There's definitely something in that window. So I'm just going to clear that out and put a mirror. So we're just gonna clear out the windows anyway and put the mirrors on there so that whatever energies on the outside are trying to come in will get deflected by that. Um, see definitely the I feel the shower or the bathtub like pipe thing uh, there's def there's something there in mean the drain the drain thank you there's a it's kind of creepy it's like a, a portal but like all I see are like blinking eyes okay um yeah so just going to i'm going to pull out whatever is in there i don't know why i'm going to do that i'm going to pull it out <laughs> just <laughs> cut those eyes it's just eyes hmm mm. So the bathroom now feels clear. Uh, destroyed those eyes. Bedroom. Feels okay, like just to clear out the energies that are here. So we're just gonna clear those out. Uh, living room as well, just clearing it all out. I'm um, gonna ask Mary to pass her light through the throughout the home, so through the ceiling, floor, walls, furniture, appliances, pipes, and mirrors again. Um, wondering if there are any earthbounds in the home? No, I do not sense any earthbounds in the home. Feels good. Just uh, balancing out the energies, you know, within. Uh, So just placing protection around the home, putting it also in a visibility cloak, black flame and ash all around just to camouflage the home. So it won't attract to dark energies. Uh, yeah. 
everything else feels good. I'm just taking a quick walk around the perimeter of the home on the outside and feeling that it's all right. Like it feels pretty good. So yeah, I'm just asking for the protector energies to come inside and also turning on the source light from inside as well. So this is also something that she can do just to ask for protection over the home just the intention alone and using your imagination, just as I had said, you know, putting a bubble around your home and invisibility cloak is good. Uh, and it's the same for yourself. You know, that's how you protect yourself morning and night. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So home is good. Yes, home is good. Okay. <clears throat> so now checking to see if there's any past life contracts or energy that is overflowing into this one that is not for her highest good. I do not sense that. Okay. So now we're going to check for and clear any negative entity contracts. These contracts are made 99.9% .9 of the time in a state of dissociation when we are traveling through the astral plane or in between lives when we get tricked into coming back in and repeating the same traumas over and over again. Um, so starting with satanic, any satanic contracts? Uh, yes, a little bit. And just to say, most people have most of these contracts. It's not unusual at all. Luciferian? Yes. Demonic? Yes. Draco? Yes. Reptilian? Yes. Gray? No. Mantis? No. Amphibian? No. Um, Archon? No. AI? Yes. False light beings? Yes. False light angels? Yes. Purgatory? Yes. Werewolf? Yes. Vampiric? A little bit, yes. Clown? Yes. False idols and gods? Yes. Secret space program? No. Okay, perfect. So any negative chords to these entities that come forward? Um, nothing that stands out, but there's a, a couple, yes. So we're just going to cut them. So that's good. Okay. Any negative chords to other humans? No, I do not sense that. No. Any negative self created thought forms? Nothing out of the ordinary, you know, waves can be hard on herself and sometimes just pretty much like, okay, you know, going with the flow. So it's good to see. Um, mm -hmm. So just to encourage her to continue to go with the flow. So that way you don't have too much traffic mentally. Um, yeah, it'll give a lot more quality of life by being present. Okay. Checking for any dissociated subpersonalities, which are aspects of the self that split off from the whole when a trauma occurs, and a trauma can be anything that overwhelms the brain. Um, getting three, ages three, four, five, six, eight, nine, eleven. 12, 13, uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 22, 24, 25, 31, 
47. And just to say that it's not unusual for humans to have many of these subpersonalities because life on earth can be very difficult and traumatic at times. Um, and scanning these personalities for any attachments, any DFEs or earthbounds or otherwise. I do feel that there are attachments in the younger ages, so like more in the single digits. Um, so we are just going to separate these and destroy and remove them out. I've also invited the Divine Mother Energy to uh, gather all of these subpersonalities and to send love, compassion, gratitude for being with us tonight and for existing in her life. Mm -hmm. So those DFEs have been removed and destroyed. Um, yeah, we can reintegrate majority of them. Uh, there's going to be a few that may come out here and there once in a while. Um, but something for her uh, lessons in her journey, her healing journey, and just being aware of herself if she ever experiences something that may trigger an emotional response or, you know, any reaction for that matter. And just to look inside and see what it's showing you about yourself or an experience. So everyone is going to be a mirror to you. So to use that to your advantage to help heal yourself. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're going to do the same thing with the soul to see if there are any fractured parts of the soul that have um, been left behind in experiences. So just scanning to see what percentage of the soul she is currently embodying. I'm getting 63, 64%. Okay. So we're just going to turn on the magnet. Um, yeah, some soul parts are just a little bit everywhere. Uh, sometimes caught in like in experiences, old relationships, you know, like friendships and things like that. Past lives, parallel lives, dark horse entities, uh, the dream state, like when you're in astral. Uh, yeah, a little bit everywhere. So we're just calling them back with Mary here with her iron. So every time the peace comes back of your soul, she heals them and reintegrates it into the whole. I'm just asking the angels to send healing to those past lives and parallel lives, aspects of herself that have experienced that trauma. Yes, they are present. So it's going really well. We're at the high 80s now, going into the 90s. And the higher 90s. So I'll just ask the higher self to take care of the rest. Okay. Thank you. And so. What do the guides say is the point of vulnerability here or the cause for these issues? What makes her vulnerable to these attachments? Um, just her lack of awareness. And now that she has it, it's, you know, that's it. She has the key to, to her learning. Um, not very much. I mean, like, it's just, again, everything is learning. You can take it as you, as you want. You can be a victim of it or you can empower yourself through it. So I see herself being an, more of an empowered person. So she will 
I don't see yourself beating yourself up for things like this. This is something that is absolutely necessary to happen. It's not dangerous or anything like that. But now it's like you can get stronger, sharpen your intuition, sharpen your discernment, sharpen how everything feels, question everything, uh, feel through it. Um, get to know what the body sensations are, what they can mean to you. You know, it's like not overthinking, but just getting to know yourself better. Um, and yeah, listening to your higher self and wisdom. And, you know, there's not really much more to say about that. I feel like she's on the right path and the right track. And she just needs a little bit of encouragement, which she's getting. Um her life is really just calling more for presence and to to come back into yourself and trust yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything? Just to say too that sometimes our guides allow for these things to happen for us to learn from. Mm -hmm. And they can be it can be a really great experience to help us um, move forward on our path and evolve and grow and like you said, sharpen our intuition and discernment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but a lot of minor things. And again, she's well on her way. And just to, re uh, to reiterate, like, protect yourself, protect your home. And um, if you have any questions, we're here to assist. Any final messages from the higher self? Or are we complete today? No, higher self is very pleased. So we are complete. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much to all who participated today. We send you our love and gratitude. Um, and we hope this is helpful for you. If you have any questions or concerns at all, please do reach out and let us know. We are sending you so much love. And yeah, thank you.